So welcome back to semi-finals day here at the Yonex Japan Open and the last of our semi-finals in this afternoon session and it's men's doubles, the number two seeds, the reigning European champions and the former world champions from Denmark, Lars Porska and Jonas Rasmussen. They're up against the number four seeds from Japan, Keita Masuda and Tadashi Otsuka. So Japanese players all performing so well here at this year's Yonex Japan Open. The applause for the men's doubles semi-final that has just finished on court number three. We, of course, are concentrating all our attention today, as indeed we will tomorrow on court number two, the centre court in this magnificent arena here, the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. Danish fans here in the crowd, but let me tell you, they will be <laughs> a few lone voices in comparison to the support for the home players of Masuda and Otsuka. It really is a magnificent stadium, isn't it? And certainly in my personal opinion, probably one of the best badminton venues in the world. Of course, it was a magnificent venue in Beijing. All the players were talking about how wonderful it was to play there. But of course, this tournament, the Japan Open, the Yonex Japan Open, is very well supported by all the top players in the world. And of course, many of the stars from the Olympic Games have been on show here this week. The players welcomed onto court, led out by the number four seeds from Japan, Keita Masuda and Tadashi Otsuka. This tournament was so well presented. of the players, the announcements. So the former world champions, Lars Borska, and Jonas Rasmussen from Denmark. Noticing that they're wearing sponsors' names of Kuala Lumpur Racket Club on the front of their shirts. Many of the players supported by Kuala Lumpur Racket Club get their expenses paid around the world, and it's absolutely extraordinary. I know I've mentioned it earlier today that the Danish team have arrived here at these Super Series events, first of all here in Japan, and many of them, most of them, will continue on to China for the second Super Series in two weeks. And the Danish team here without a coach, without a manager, without a physio, lack of funds, they tell me. In fact, most of the players have funded their own expenses to come here. I don't think there's many Asian players that have had to do that. So for the Japanese pair, well in fact all the players on court in the twilight of their careers, Keita Masuda, 29 years of age and his partner, number 12 on the world ranking but seeded four here at the Onyx Japan Open. And he's a 74. His partner, a little shorter. There he is, and one year older. 30 years of age. And for the Japanese combination, well, they were quarter finalists last year. Lost out to the now Olympic champions Marcus Guido and Hendra Setiawan, who of course were the number one seeds here this year at the Yonex Japan Open, surprisingly lost in the quarterfinal stage to Dasuki and Sukbowan, their teammates. But for the Japanese pair, well, 
really pay attention to that quarter-final victory over the number five seeds, the defending champions, and the 2000 Olympic Games champions, gold medalists, Tony Gunawan and Chandra Bajaya. Of course, Tony Gunawan now representing the United States of America. But that quarter-final victory, 21-15, 21-15 in just 33 minutes, that is impressive. So for the Danes, Lars Porska, 32 years of age, very tall man, 187, that's about 6 foot 2. All ranking of 6, seeded 2. Jonas Rasmussen, 30 years of age, so he'll turn 31 next month, born in Aarhus in Jutland, Denmark. And of course, they won the World Championships in 2003 when they were staged in Birmingham. But the last competition they played was the Olympic Games where they reached the semi-final. But they lost the bronze medal playoff match. And a bit of disappointment it was too. But uh, so far here at the Onyx Japan Open, they've had a bye in the first round by virtue of the fact that they are the number two seeds. And then they beat teammates Chris Janssen and Molly Hus in two straight games. And then the British combination, the English combination of Chris Adcock and Robert Blair. Pretty comfortable, that one, too. So the Japanese fans, well, they've seen disappointment from their players so far in the semi-finals. Disappointment, obviously, for the men's singles youngster. Kimichi Targo, 19 years of age, disappointment in the last of our semi-finals when Maeda and Suitsuna, the number one seeds, went out to the Chinese pair in the women's doubles, so they'll be hoping for Japanese success here. Ladies and love to see Japanese players in the final, and this is their last hope. Mr. Ong of Malaysia, Arampa. So, 32-year-old, the oldest man on court, Lars Porska, getting the semi-final underway. The Danes all in black kit. Certainly for these two pairs, two of the long-standing partnerships in World Badminton, both of these pairs started playing together in 2002. So for both of them, seventh year within these partnerships. Masuda, the youngest man on court at the age of 29. With all due respect to him, he probably looks the oldest. Time is over. One all. from Rasmussen to Porsco to leave the shuttle and it was a correct decision. from Masuda. Right into the corner. The drive. Finals prior to this Yonex Japan Open. Including, I might say, the Olympics. Mira on serve from Otsuka.
Oh, yes, there's another one that's landed well in. This judgment from the Dane. Last title that the Japanese... Unbelievable defence. Absolutely terrific from the Japanese pair. And the frustration in the end by the Danes not being able to put the shuttle on the floor. And in the end going for too much of an angle and therefore making the error. Oh yes, good return of the quick serve. Otsuka not deceiving Rasmussen at all with that serve. between the two Danes. Unusual for such an experienced men's doubles pair. Clash of rackets. But you have to say it was clever play by the Japanese combination, just playing the shuttle softly, changing the pace into the centre of the court. Both of the Danes going for the same shot. And the back level. Six all in this opening game. Oh, once again, trying the flick serve to Rasmussen to no avail. Last two times they've tried that. He's promptly put the shuttle on the floor. Oh my goodness gracious, what a loose serve from Rasmussen. Shuttle just popping up, look at this, way over the net. Simple opportunity from the Suda to put the shuttle away. Very tactically astute player is Lars Porska. Always seems to think and plan ahead. As indeed every badminton player should. Oh yeah. I knew exactly where that was going to come. Oh, clever. And that's exactly what I was trying to talk about just a moment ago. The clever placement from Porska. Good serve. Rack it up ready and then just places the shuttle in a downward direction into the mid-court area, into the space. with silence from the crowd here. 
11-9 at the mid-game interval. And, of course, the Danes without a coach. Park Duvong, former world and Olympic champion from Korea. Working with the Japanese team for the last three years. And, my goodness, what a difference he has made. Of course, Park Duvong had a spell coaching in England, then moved to Malaysia, came on here to Japan, and rumour has it that he will be moving back to Korea perhaps within the next year or so. But I have to stress that's not confirmed. So, 11-9, opening game. Ah, oh, yes. Good smash from Tadashi Otsuka. Attacking play switched from one pair to the other. Quality of defence quite superb. And therefore, despite the attacking play, it's so difficult for either pair to actually put the shuttle on the floor. Terrific men's doubles. Porska just raises his hand in apology, as does his partner, for the luck of the net court. But he created his own luck with the interception. Well, the crowd enjoyed that. I'm sure Masuda did too. Goodness, that was powerful. Crowd desperately trying to get behind. Masuda and Otsuka. Now, Park looks a little bit concerned at the moment. Doesn't often give a lot away an awful lot of how he's feeling. But I can tell you that he was applauding that one. Pleased with that. And the margin narrowed to just one point. Oh, excellent play from Jonas Rasmussen. That was the one setting himself up. again apologising for their good fortune of the net court. Oh. Yeah, I think 
think he's lost confidence on his low serve. He's using the flick. Remember in those early stages that he popped the shuttle up. Oh, fortunate for Otsuka that the shuttle went wide. So a real opportunity now the Japanese pair if they can close this margin. It's just two points at the moment. Well, the Japanese pair have obviously been told to flick serve Rasmussen because there was yet another starting off the rally. And from that moment on, the Japanese pair were having to defend. He doubles is all about attacking play. Of course you've got to have a good defence in world badminton nowadays for all the doubles players. But you're not going to win rallies by defending. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, I said he reads the game well. Wasn't that a prime example? Shuttle had gone past him when he played that winning backhand. It's extraordinary. Great spatial awareness. Good judgment from Masuda. Oh. Rasmussen is not the only one struggling with his serve. Good low sir. Ah, but an even better shot from Tadashi Otsuka. No chance on that from Rasmussen. Oh, they're all struggling with the low sir. Well, the problem is, is that they know that anything short or a little bit high over the net, and the point is lost. Therefore, they try and make it perfect. It's very much a trait of men's doubles nowadays with this new scoring system. But the rallies are exceedingly short. Now, he holds his nerve, now uses the flick to no avail. That's because he served in the net last time, he served short. Three game points now to the European champions. Brilliant. Oh, rally set up with a little push into the deep forehand corner from Porska. 
the clash of rackets meant that Lars Porska's racket frame was broken with the clash. Did very well to control the rally. That little push there. Yeah. Left the finishing shot to his partner with the broken racket. That was the one that had done the damage. And so the opening game to the former world champions and current European champions. 21-17. Frank Gerard offering advice and I wonder if he's saying that once you've played that drive defence you've got to move forward because at the moment in my opinion it's the Danes who are controlling the front of the court and therefore controlling the match. progression all the way through never more than three points in it <laughs> Danish supporters Second considerably game. outnumbered Danish fans won't mind that though it's their pair who won game to the good. 21-17 the opening game for Lars Porska and Jonas Rasmussen. Here we go with the second. And an excellent start. The good low serve from Porska. The third shot pounced on by Rasmussen. outmaneuvered and not able to finish off when they had the chances with the attacking play and that was because the Japanese pair really trying to move the shuttle when they were defending blocking cross court guiding the shuttle rather than just getting it back You've got to get it back with interest and there's the flick serve again you know he's lost all confidence with that low serve and that's not a good sign for a doubles player that first one and then snatched at the second oh, so clever isn't he always seems to be in the right place at the right time decided to leave that at the last moment. Shake on racket there. 
nerves. Second time he's got the judgment absolutely spot on. The second time he wasn't quite sure about it. the court from Lars Borska. Needed three to finish it off. Borska, of course, has been a finalist at the Japanese Open once previously. That was back in 2001 when he was playing with Martin Lungo. Lungo, of course, in recent years has been playing with Jens Eriksson. But as a pair, this Danish combination have three times been semi-finalists prior to this year, so this is their fourth semi-final at the Japan Open. That's a pretty good record. And certainly last year, the Japan Open was very much a turning point for this Danish pair, because up until that point in 2007, they hadn't got past a second round of any tournament they'd played. Yeah. Now, as far as the Japanese pair are concerned, I think they've got to find this man, Rasmussen. I think he's the weaker link at the moment. Seeds. Oh, that's clever. You see, this is why they've got to keep it away from the tall man, Lars Porska, at the front of the court because Porska just has wonderful touch and control. Of course, the Danes, the only European survivors. Two Danes earlier on today in single semi-finals. Tina Rasmussen, who of course was defending her title here, but she went out, as did Jochen Pearson. Boy, did he go out just 20 minutes, the entirety of his match against the world number one, Lee Chong Wei. Oh, what a smash from Otsuka. Found his low serve now has Masuda. Rasmussen, who's made the unforced error. Oh, that's a great low serve, even better return. Incredible. Serve, skim the net, net cord as a net shot. And the final smash. It's 
springs have gone in Horska's racket. Yeah, he knew it. Looked down at his racket after he played that second shot. And thankfully for him, let's have a look at that. Yep. Looking down at his racket, knew the strings had gone. Just throws the racket to the side of the arena. A whole host of stringers repairing the players' rackets. The far end of the arena. My goodness, don't they do a good job, the support staff, the Yonex stringers. looking for the opportunities to attack because when they do the Japanese pair seem devastating so as with the opening game the mid game interval there's a two point margin but unlike the opening game this time in the second it's in favour of the Japanese pair back up on the court because of course they don't have a coach with them. Yeah. Mark Jubong obviously saying to his players, yeah, just relax on that serve, just push through the shuttle. Never think about hitting the serve. You always think about just caressing the shuttle over the net. Just pushing it into court. Yeah, that's super. Oh, so too is that. on the opportunity did Lars Borska. Well worked by the Danes. And to me, it really is all about vying for the attacking play. Just one point in it now. Good net shot. Oh, what an opportunity missed from Keita Masuda, and he knows it. And the error on the smash means that the scores are back level. Twelve all in this second game. The Danes having won the first.
the crowd enjoyed that. One of the rare occasions that Lars Borska playing the wrong shot. 14-12. Why, oh why, are they flicking Rasmussen? He's been moving back and smashing so well today. I just don't understand it. But from a Danish perspective, they're enjoying it. Oh, what a good rally. Had to change direction. Couldn't control the shot, Masuda, in the end. And once again, it's level. Lars Porska, quite frankly, has been the outstanding player on court so far. As always, reading the game, reading the returns. And now the Danes back into the lead. confusion earlier on in that rally between the two Danes calling to each other who was supposed to take the one down the centre but they got themselves out of trouble and the crowd here desperately trying to encourage Masuda and Otsuka see what the Japanese pair were trying to do. They were trying to take away the initiative. They were trying to suddenly do something a little bit different. And I think they were right to try it. It just didn't work for them on that occasion. So now five straight points from the Danes from 12-14 down to 17-14 up. That's six straight points. And this is why they have in the past been world champions because they have the ability to respond at exactly the right moment. Sense the pressure, sense the time to up the pace, up the intensity. Not only sensing it, have the ability to implement it. There yet, though. Good serve once again from Porska. All right, the Japanese crowd here in Tokyo sense that it really is now or never as far as Masuda and Otsuka are concerned. Masuda has got to find his low serve. It's been doing okay lately with that one. There goes the flick. Got away with it though, so far. No! Yep. And I do I mean got away with it because through, throughout the entirety of that rally, the Japanese pair were having to defend. Far more likely to win the rallies when you're attacking. Right. 
right. Is he going to flick again? Have the courage to serve low. Push through the shuttle. No, there goes the flick. You know, when you lose the serve, the nerve on your own serve really is very drastic. It's like a golfer getting the yips when he's putting. Two points away from the first ever place in the Japan Open final as a pair. Of course, this man, Porska, was in the final in 2001 with Lungo. Oh, yes. Four match points to the European champions. And from 12, 14 down. Eight of the last nine points going the Danish way. And that really has made a colossal difference. And that's it. Delight for Rasmussen. For the first time ever, he's through to the Japan Open final. Great performance by the former world champion. They responded when needed. That 12-14 deficit. Going straight through to 18-14 up. A mark of a good pair. Really wonderful performance from them throughout this year's tournament so far. So they're through to the final of the Japan Open. And of course that concludes our semi-final lineup for today. Just to recap and remind you of what's happened in today's semi-finals of course the holder of the women's singles Tina Rasmussen from Denmark was beaten by the world junior champion Wang Yi Han of China then of course we saw the teenager from Japan Targo beaten by the Indonesian and world championship silver medalist from last year then the Olympic silver medalist from this year just from last month Li Chung Wei from Malaysia absolutely destroyed the Dane Joachim Pearson disappointment for Japan in the women's doubles when the Olympic semi-finalists Maeda and Suetsuna were beaten by the new Chinese combination and of course as we see the Danes depart for their interviews depart as well from the tournament to the Japanese players so that's it from semi-finals day here at the Yonix Japan Open we of course will be back tomorrow with all the finals live 12 midday local time. I hope you can join us then from all of us here and especially from me, Jill Clark. Until tomorrow, bye-bye.